Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anton and I will lead today's webinar about new features of Smart PTT software implemented in 8.2 version. In case if someone is unfamiliar with our software, I will tell you shortly about its general features. Smart PTT comes in two variants. Smart PTT Basic is a solution for small local radio networks where control station is used to dispatch the system. Smart PTT Enterprise allows dispatch and control over complex Motorola MotoTurbo networks such as IP Site Connect, Capacity Plus, Link Capacity Plus and Connect Plus. Dispatcher software gives opportunity to control and block the flow of data and voice in radio network, request location of subscribers and monitor the state of repeaters. Smart PTT connects to MotoTurbo networks directly via IP, including Capacity Plus and Link Capacity Plus over network application interface for both voice and data transmission. Capacity Plus networks can also be monitored and logged via IP connection without network application interface. But in this case, to have ability to send data into network and make calls, control stations are needed. Also, Smart PTT gives a set of software tools such as web client and file transfer software, which increase radio network usability and functionality. Smart PTT has functionality that allows it to connect to PBX and gives subscribers the ability to use PBX interconnection from radio network as well. That's all general functionality. Let's proceed to new features. New features include the following. API to radio server allowing third-party developers to use data and request information directly from our radio server. Support of Talisman Sprite option board allows using heartbeat and man down features. Voice notification within radio network. Resolving GPS location data into address. Utilizing hot case to call pre-selected subscribers in one touch. Locking views organization. Support of multiple simultaneous connections to different network application interface networks. Local linked capacity plus groups support. Register, registering dispatcher as SIP soft phone. New radio blocking options. And sending telemetry signals to groups. That is it. Now I will proceed with this list one by one, revealing the features a bit more. And first feature to review is API. API is a software library that grants third-party developers an access to the data kept by Smart PTT radio server. Library contains all main classes needed for making calls, controlling the state of subscribers, and controlling the flow of data in radio network. Functionality given by API allows creation of fully functional dispatcher software based on Smart PTT radio server. All classes and functions are documented and included in documentation for API. Let's proceed with Telisman option board. Smart PTT now supports Telisman Sprite TW251 option board. Two features realized in this option boards are implemented in Smart PTT software. The first is man, sorry, the first is man down. It is a control feature that provides ability to monitor the position of the radio in the space. If radio leans too much, leaving the safety cone, first timer will start. Upon ending of first timer, pre-alarm will start, notifying radio users that radio is tilted too much. Second timer will start. Upon ending of second timer, if alarm was not cleared, radio will trigger the alarm and start an emergency call to dispatcher. This feature can be used to monitor the state of lone workers. For example, if someone lost consciousness and fallen on the ground, the radio will send the emergency call uh, after some timers to notify the dispatcher that this user is in emergency state. The second feature of Talisman Option Board is Heartbeat. It is a feature that implements strict control of presence of a radio in the network. It works as following. Radio is sending heartbeat signals every preset period of time. Radio server replies with confirmation that this message was accepted. If radio will not receive confirmation, it will alert user that he or she left the coverage zone. 
If radio server will not receive heartbeat signal when expected, it will notify dispatcher that subscriber left the coverage zone or his or her radio is not functioning. Such two-sided control allows full control of presence of radio subscribers in the network. There is a rule for lone worker in Smart PTT based on heartbeat signals to integrate it into Smart PTT rules and alerts system. Next new feature of Smart PTT software is voice notification. Voice notification gives dispatcher an ability to play a selected sound file on selected channels for a selected period of time. It can be useful to notify radio users about emergency case or send a signal of attention into radio network. For example, it can be used to send out a blast alarm before demolition works into radio network on an automated basis to make sure that all subscribers will receive this information. State of channels is monitored and there is statistics for how many tries were successful in total per each slot. Delay between notifications is configurable. Another feature is address resolving. This option allows Smart PTT software to convert GPS location data into actual physical address using services provided by Google and OpenStreetMap. Address resolving is possible via a couple of ways. First, Right-clicking a random point on the map will give you a tooltip with a floating address. Second, Subscribers menu. From Subscribers menu you can select the button uh, Resolve the address and then you will get the information about the address of this subscriber in the Subscriber State window. And third, Generating a Subscriber Location report. Addresses will be automatically resolved and included in the report uh, right near the subscriber's name. Note that address resolve feature relies on databases stored by third party, Google or OpenStreetMap. And for some regions data can be outdated or incorrect due to errors in databases. Also data can be inaccurate if region was not pre properly mapped for Google Maps or OpenStreetMap. Also GPS location error should be taken into account. So if coordinates are incorrect uh, so will be the address. Address will be also incorrect. So uh, this feature must be used with caution. Next stop is hotcase functionality. Hotcase are now available to be set for each group and subscriber to call them instantly. Using specially made hotcase manager, dispatcher can select appropriate case for these actions. Respond to latest call and repeat latest outgoing call, hotkeys are also available. Dispatcher can use keys in combination with Ctrl, Shift and Alt notification keys. In combination of keys to be assigned is already in use. System will warn dispatcher about collision and will point to group or subscriber for whom this combination is used. More to come. Locking user interface layout. Administrator or dispatcher workplace or dispatcher himself can lock user interface layout. Locking layout will disallow dispatcher from moving views around, changing size of views and opening or closing new views. Such option is useful to protect user interface from being changed accidentally by dispatcher. We are proceeding with multiple network application interface connection support. Previously, main restriction of using network application interface was that DDMS and MNIS pair of services must be installed on the same PC as radio server to work. This prohibited simultaneous use of different network application interface networks. Now this problem is resolved. To connect simultaneously to multiple network application interface networks, user can set up a so-called MNIS relay. It is a program which allows radio server to connect remotely to different PC and receive data from MNIS service to a low connection to NAE network. MNIS relay is dedicated service. It can be run on dedicated PC or on virtual machine on the same PC as radio server. One NAE connection is possible directly from radio server to NAE network. For each additional NAE network, one MNIS relay is needed. MNIS relay installs as a system service, like a radio server. This way it does not need any activity from user except from starting the PC with MNIS relay. 
service will start automatically on system boot, along with MNIS DDMS pair. Next feature is no less than previous local groups in Link Capacity Plus. For Link Capacity Plus system groups there is an option, whether this group is system-wide or local for selected site. Dispatcher behavior to this group is changing correspondingly. If group is selected as system-wide, calls to this group from dispatcher will proceed to each side of the system. If group is local, call to this group will proceed on only to specific site. Note that these settings should correspond to real situation in the network. For example, if group 1 is local for each of four sites, four entries for group 1 must be created in order to distinguish them from each other, named correspondingly. If group 1 will be created as system-wide, dispatcher will be unable to distinguish group 1 of site 1 from group 1 of site 2, and will be unable to make direct call to specific site, only system-wide call. Among other new features, there is ability to connect dispatcher to existing PBX as SIP client. It has settings for connecting to existing PBX extension including proxy server settings and domain login. When connecting as SIP client, dispatcher behaves as common SIP soft phone. Upon successful registration on PBX, dispatcher can use standard controls to make calls and can be called easily as internal extension of PBX. It simplifies the process of setting up the dispatcher as a PBX client. Onwards to radio block feature. New radio block feature allows radio administrator to select the type of radio blocking that will be used in radio server. Two options are available. First, channel block, so-called channel ingibit. Blocked radio will be unable to use channel it was blocked on. It will show channel denied warning and user will be unable to press PTT on this channel. And the second option is radio block, so-called radio disable. Blocked radio will be totally blocked. Display will not work. No activity will be possible with this radio, including pressing PTT or any buttons. Though, it would continue to hear transmissions in the radio network when powered on. And the final feature is group telemetry. Group telemetry feature allows dispatcher to send out telemetry signals to group of subscribers. Previously, only option available was sending private telemetry signal. For example, sending up a telemetry signal to the station connected to light bulb will light this bulb up. Group telemetry allows simultaneous control over selected group of subscribers. So we can send the telemetry signal to the talk group of radios and all of them will light their light bulbs simultaneously. So this can be used to simultaneously control a group of subscribers. That's all about main new features of SmartPTT 8.2. Visit our website smartptt.com to find out more information about SmartPTT software. Check out our technical support portal on support.smartptt.com. You can submit your requests there and receive fast and professional help. Follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, user SmartPTT. If you have any questions, feel free to send email to us on info at smartptt.com or ask it on support portal. This webinar is recorded and will be uploaded on YouTube, as well as available for download on our website or by request on aforementioned email.